So you know how to find the area of a right triangle. That's easy. At least it should be by now. But what about non-right triangles? How do you find the area of those? What's up, y'all? I'm Tom, and this is Like a Math Class, and we're going to get into just that. How to find the area of non-right triangles using trigonometry. Let's get to it. When we have right triangles, the area is always one half the base times the height. And that's pretty straightforward because if we've got a right triangle, we always have the base here and the height here. Or if we've got a triangle that's not a right triangle, a lot of times what we do is we, we still look at this base, but then we have to create this kind of imaginary height. Or we cut this down and we find a height that way for this base. Or we look at this base and again, we have to create some kind of an imaginary height. But what happens if we don't have these heights? These three are all non-right triangles. How do we find these heights if we don't have those heights? Maybe instead we've got a side and the base, but we don't have the height. That's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to look to see what happens if we have this two sides and an angle, but no height. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a height right here. We're going to call it our height and we're going to say that this is a right angle. And let's label this out. Let's call this vertice A, we'll call this one B, and this one C, which means that this is side B, this is side little c, and this thing here is side A. Let's imagine that we have side A, side B, and angle C. So we've got this side, this side, and this angle. Now, if I know this angle right here and I've got this imaginary height, I've just created a right triangle. This is a right triangle. Now, I don't know what this value is. This value has been cut from this height. So this is not A, this whole thing is A. If I wanna use trigonometry with this right triangle that I just made here, I have to use my height and my hypotenuse or side B. And your height and your hypotenuse would be sine C equals opposite, which would be our height over our hypotenuse. Our height, H is not our hypotenuse in this case, that's our height over B, which is our hypotenuse. But if we rearrange this thing, we can, we can move this B over to this side and we can have our height in terms of B and sine c. Then b sine c is equal to our height. Let's move this up a little bit. That's cool because that means the area of this triangle, the area is going to be equal to one half a, which is our base, b sine c. b sine c, which is the equivalent to our height. So this height right here, this height right here is equivalent to this. So we could do our areas one half a, b, sine c. Well, that's kind of cool. Just like that, we've got the area of a triangle. But what if we had the other side? What do we do then? Well, let's imagine that we have, maybe we have side c, angle b, and again, we'll say side a. So we'll just put a square around it this time. So what would we have then? Well, let's, let's use the same process. If we have angle b, and we've got this right triangle. Again, we don't know how much this was cut out. We have to look at our opposite side. So this opposite side and our hypotenuse. So sine B is equal to our height over little c. Or again, if we rearrange this, that will be C sine B is equal to our height. Just like over here, our area will then be, the area of this whole triangle is gonna be one half a, that's our base, and then our height, C sine B. Now what I want people to start recognizing here is we've got a little bit of a pattern with our formula. So if you notice in the purple formula, over here on the right, we've got A, B, and sine C. A, B, and sine C. Over here in the green one, we've got A, C, and sine B. So we've got the two sides and the included angle. We've got the two sides and the included angle. And whether I do it like this or I rotate my triangle around to fit on one of the other sides, whether it's sitting on side C or sitting on side B, 
we could do the same thing for A. So if we looked at A and let's say we had side C and side B, our formula for that one, our area would be one half BC sine A. So again, the two sides and the included angle. So as long as you've got those two sides and the included angle, you can find the area of a non-right triangle. Cool. So let me stack these up and do one last comparison so we can kind of see what the formulas look like. So what we're looking at is A, B, C. So all three of these have all three letters being used of our triangle. Side A, side B, angle C, A, B, C. And notice that the angle is always not the sides that you have here. So A, C, B, A, C, B. So again, the two sides and the angle that's not the letter that's not used here. And same with B, C, A. So as long as you can kind of remember that we're talking about either the two sides and the included angle, or you can remember that I've got to have the two, to two side letters and the angle that doesn't match up with those, you're going to be able to find the area of a non-right triangle. It's pretty straightforward. But let's look at an example to see what this looks like when we actually have to put it to use. So here we say find the area of the triangle shown with angle B equaling 115 degrees. So let's put that in there. Angle B is 115 degrees. Angle A is 45 degrees. 45 degrees. AC is 12. So AC is 12 centimeters. And BC is 7.4, 7.4 centimeters. So as long as I've got two sides and the included angle, wait a minute, I've got two sides, but I don't have the included angle. Ah, but wait a minute, of course, all the angles in the triangle sum up to 180 degrees so I can find that included angle that's missing. So all I have to do is take 180 and subtract 115 plus 45. And I'm going to have 180 minus 160. So the angle is going to be 20 degrees. So this angle up here is going to be 20 degrees. And now I've got two sides and my included angle. Okay, so now I can use my new formula for the area of a triangle. I didn't want to give you one too easy, so I had to throw a little bit of a mix in there for you. All right, so now we're just going to apply the formula. The area is equal to 1 half 12 times 7.4 times sine of 20 degrees. So I could break this down, but I don't, I don't know what sine of 20 degrees is. That doesn't fall on my unit circle anywhere. So I'm going to get out my calculator. 0. 0.5 times 12 times 7.4 times sine of 20. Ooh, am I in the proper mode? Yes, I'm in degree mode. Okay, good, this will work. So sine of 20, 15.18569, dot, dot, dot. And if I wanna go to three significant figures, which I often have to do with IB style questions, um, I'm gonna go to 15.2. So my area is equal to 15.2 centimeters squared, and there is my area. So I've got one more example for you. If you find kind of the development of this formula useful or intriguing or something that you wouldn't typically see or think about, give me a thumbs up like the video, and make sure you keep an eye out for the website that's gonna be popping up soon. It'll be linked down below in the comments and the description uh, that will offer you more resources as you're going through your math courses. All right, let's get to the last example. All right, in this case, we've got triangle PQR, where P is eight, Q is six, and the area is 16. All right, so first thing I have to do is I have to draw a triangle. Now, it doesn't really matter what kind of triangle I draw. I'm just going to make one that doesn't quite look like a right triangle. So that way I know that I'm not working with a right triangle because there's nothing in here that indicates that I'm working with a right triangle. And this doesn't mean that it's an equilateral triangle. This is just the symbol that says triangle PQR. So P is equal to 8. Q is equal to 6. Now, I just picked two sides, but I know that I would have to label this the opposite of little q would be big Q. So this would have to be Q 
the opposite of eight would have to be big P, which means this is gonna be R up here. Because remember, anytime we have opposite sides from our angles, if this is angle P, then this is little p. If this is angle Q, this is little q. All right, and we know that the area of the whole thing is 16 centimeters squared, so we wanna find the measure of angle R. So this is what we're looking for right here. Well, again, our area is equal to one half AB sine C. In this case, we've got two sides, but we don't have the included angle. So I'm gonna have one half eight times six. I don't have the included angle and I do have the area though. So I could put 16 over here. Now I just need to isolate R or sine R. So half of eight is four. So I've got 16 equals four times six times sine R. Divide both sides by 24. Divide both sides by 24. And I'm gonna be left with sine R is gonna equal, well I could, even, I could simplify this by dividing both of these things by eight. So that's gonna give me two thirds. So R is gonna equal the inverse of sine of two thirds. So now I'm gonna to have to use a different function on my calculator and we're looking at the inverse of sine. So I'm gonna hit the blue button and then sine and then I'm gonna use uh, two divided by three. I'm not gonna just put 0.6 or 0.67. I wanna use the full value. So I'm gonna just use two thirds. And then when I hit enter, I get R is equal to 41.8 degrees. All right, so again, sticking to three significant figures. But it's kind of cool how we created those two right triangles within the non-right triangle so we could actually use trigonometry for this non-right triangle. How many times can I say right triangle or non-right triangle in a video? We'll have to rewind and count. All right, that's it for us, and I'll see you in the next video.